God is waiting on the warrior in you. God is waiting on the warrior in me to train up a child in the way that they should go. You know, how do we know what to teach our children if we don't know God's Word? And how do we teach them what to know if we don't know what God wants us to know? Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. But how can you train them up if you really don't know God's Word? When you look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, it says this. It says, and starting with verse 4, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Now here, here goes. Listen to this. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them on your hands and wear them on your forehead as a reminder. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. It's, it's really trying to drive home the, the, the idea and the purpose that we need to be talking about God and His ways and His Word all the time. All the time. From the time you get up to the time you go to bed. Everything that you do, tie in God. It doesn't have to be all serious all the time, but you need to tie Him into everything that you're teaching your children. You know, behind me, you see all these books and all these charts and everything as my wife works with our children to, to, to help them with their schooling. And, and she trains them up academically. But the most important thing she trains them up in the most important thing we both are convicted by as parents is to train them up in the Word of God. Without knowing the Word of God, they're set up for failure. How do they make the decisions of peer pressure? How do they make the decisions one day when they're parents, when they're married, when they're making life's choices? You know, one of the, one of the, the key chapters in the Bible about spiritual warfare is Ephesians chapter 6. And in Ephesians chapter 6, it teaches us all about the armor of God and spiritual warfare, and that's wonderful. But look how that chapter actually starts. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and your mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on the earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up in the discipline and the instruction that comes from the Lord. You know, I love being a daddy. Absolutely love it. But I also understand the burden and the responsibility and the conviction it is too. You know, and when I say a burden, I don't mean a bad thing. I mean that my heart burdens when I fail at being a daddy. If I say something that hurts one of my children's feelings, and I do every week, by the way. Every single week, I have to you know, come to them and ask them to forgive me for something I said or did or didn't do. And, and as a father, I, for, any, for, for us as fathers to neglect the, being that spiritual leader in our children's lives, we are setting them up for failure in so many ways. God designed us as men, as fathers, that we are the most powerful, influential being in our children's life here on this earth. Now, Praise God for godly mommies because so many dads have neglected that role. And so godly warrior women have had to step up and grandparents have had to step up. But when the father does his job by not pushing his children's buttons, by not making the children angry on purpose, but by teaching them, instructing them, and disciplining them, uh, and training them in the ways of God, then they are, they are setting their kids up to be successful. You know, it's... It's interesting at the um, at the counseling center that I that I run. So many kids come in with um, just defiance issues, disciplinary issues with school and home, and and there's a pattern most of the time that so many of these kids are not being trained up in the ways of the word. So they, I, I'm not going to sit here and say they don't know better. They know right from wrong. They know good from evil, but they don't know God's word. So there's no conviction. There's no conviction. They know what they're doing is wrong, but there's no conviction because. No one's ever showed them and taught them what the Word says. You know, that Proverbs 13, 24 says, He who loves his child is quick and careful to discipline his child, but he who hates his child does not discipline them. Every child I've ever had read that, it, it 
it shocked them. They didn't know it was even in the Bible. And, and, and so I would, I would ask the child, do you want your mommy and daddy to love you or hate you? Do you, me as a counselor, do you want me to, to love you or hate you? You know? When you, when you look at Ephesians 6, 4, where it teaches the fathers to, to not provoke their children to anger, but train them up in the, in the instruction and the discipline of the Lord, it's interesting because I, I've had somebody question, why doesn't it talk about love in that, in that verse? Aren't they supposed to love their children? Well, here's the thing. If we don't train our children up in the instruction and the discipline of the Lord, then we're not really loving them. You can buy them all the wonderful gifts you want. There's a, there's a lot of parents out there that believe that the way you really love your kids is that you just give them what they want. You just do what they want from them. But where, where will you, when you die, when you die and your children are still here on this earth, what, who's going who's gonna to teach them then? Who's going to take care of them then? And so it's so important that you train them up. You know, the other day I was just thinking about something and it, it, it was it's like, wow, God, that's, that's so amazing to think about. We, we live in, a, in, a, in a, a, a society today where we have iPods and we have, you know, the iPads and we have the iPhones and it's, it's I, I, I. And there's a big problem with that because it's, it's all idolatry. We get so distracted by all the electronics, and, and there's nothing wrong with electronics if they're used and for, for kingdom building, and if there's balance in our life, not addiction to that electronic. But I found this to be very interesting. One of the names of God is I Am. One of the names of God is I Am. And I, and I, I just, <laughs> I don't think it's a coincidence that one of Satan's names is Prince of the Air. Prince of the Air. And so he's He's, he's put a lot of stuff out there that distracts us from I am, gets us wrapped up in, in iPads and iPhones and iPods and, and nothing against those things um, when they're used properly. But when they're not used properly, they become idolatry. Some, some great ways to train up your children in the instruction and the discipline of the Lord. Some great ways to just to bless your kids is, is to help them to memorize scriptures. Um, if they're in trouble for something, have them write scriptures. It's so important that you take time to have Bible studies um, with, with your children. One, you know, one of the, the things that I love and respect my wife for the most is that every day she takes time to pray with our kids and to have Bible study with our kids. You know, they, they, my family sees me constantly on the go doing ministry stuff. Um, but my wife, her ministry to our children is, is vital. Her, her ministry to them is, is the most important thing that she's here for on this planet. And I wish more mommies seen it that way. I wish more daddies seen it that way. And, and taking that, 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 that time to be intimate with them spiritually helps them to have more spiritual intimacy with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You know, I, I will be honest with you. Here in America, um, we, a lot of our kids struggle with uh, being lazy, being selfish, um, having this apathetic spirit. But if, if I can be honest with you, it's our fault. As the parents, it's our fault. Because if we would get them involved in missions, if we would get them involved in serving and volunteering and seeing the brokenness of their community or taking them on a mission trip and letting them see what's going on around the world and, and just how blessed they really are, it would help change their hearts. It would make a, make a big difference. And so I definitely encourage you to get your family involved in something to do with serving, volunteering, or missions. When you, when you look at, at the scriptures and you look at this passage in Ephesians 6, 1, 1 through 4, it, it's such a blessing for the kids because we want to teach kids how to keep their word. That's so important that you teach a child how to keep their word. And it's exciting to tell them that the first commandment that God gave us with a promise, that he's promising us something, is the commandment where he tells the children to honor their parents and he'll bless them. He promises to, to if we'll honor our parents. I know, you know, it may sound silly, but as a grown man, I'll call my parents and I'll ask them, do I honor them? And, and if they'll tell me yes. And that's important to me because I want God's blessing. I want his blessing. I tell my children, you know, I'll pray with them and I'll say, guys, y'all are going to live a long time because God's not a liar. And he promises to bless you if you'll honor mommy and daddy. And so it's so important that we teach our, our kids and instruct them and train them about what honor is. In our, in, our, in our generation today, a lot of the kids that I counsel, the biggest thing that I see they struggle with is honoring the authorities above them. They just, 
They fight that with everything within them. And, and it's so important for us as the parents to train them to honor the authorities above them, starting with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, S starting with the parents, starting with, with the, the, the judges and lawyers, the, the police department and all that stuff. But I'm talking about their teachers, their principals. Um, it's so important that they learn the importance of honoring the authorities above them. But that's on us. We have to train up our children in the way they should go. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for your holy word. I thank you, Father, for just teaching us your ways. Father, I pray that um, for anyone that will hear these words, that they will receive them, that they are from you and not from me. They are from, from your word. Father, there's such a pattern in the Bible, a pattern that, that when a child is being trained up pro properly, that they, they learn and become great leaders. And, and those that aren't disciplined and trained up properly, it just leads to so much heartache in their lives and in the lives of others around them. Father, I just pray your blessing over the parents as we all try, as, especially as, as believers, to train up our children in the instructions of your word. And I, I just thank you and praise you, Father, in Jesus' holy name. Amen.